Welcome to Optimized Dental Study Group. We have the wonderful TJ Annika with us today. Um, TJ is um, a transformation coach. She has just like the most amazing story uh, about how she kind of came into this um, kind of career path uh, and journey. And I'm excited for her to share a little bit um, about how she kind of moved into this field. Um, but what I think is super great is that TJ um has some dental connection which is super awesome uh because we know that dentals is kind of weird niche market of people and and so she gets it she gets um what dentals like and she knows it inside out because her husband is a dentist and owns multiple practices and is super awesome guy in fact i think she calls him awesome. <laughs> um, but so TJ and I kind of know each other for a long time. Uh, TJ and I were really into wedding photography um, a long time ago. Like that's like a whole other life, it feels like. Maybe not a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, okay. It feels like it's a whole Aging other us. life, but but maybe only like five years. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we kind of were in wedding photography for a long time. I was actually a second shooter for her at one point and we yeah. just like had a great time doing that. And we kind of just did our own things for a while. And then we kind of now circle back into this, um, realm and I'm just excited to have her on because I think that in dentistry, what happens a lot of time, especially in office management or when you're in these kind of high functioning roles, uh, we tend to forget about ourselves. We tend to forget about um, taking care of kind of the mental side of things, the soft skill development, all of these things. And um, they truly are what make or break you in your career long term if you're able to take care of that side of yourself. And so I know that TJ really focuses in on um, helping people guide them and coach them through um, multiple different processes. Um, but today I'm super excited to have her on because she is going to kind of go over a few things with us that's going to help us in our day to day lives, working with people, working with um, di different perspectives and atmospheres that kind of are influencing our lives and how we feel at the end of it every day. Um, so yeah, thank you, TJ, for coming on. I'm super appreciative of you kind of like putting it all out there for us because this is probably a little different for you, but I just, we just knew that we wanted to have you on when we met you and um, um, talking about what we were, what we had going on here. So I'll turn the time over to you and you can kind of go into a little bit of introduction here and introduce yourself to the group. Yes. Well, first, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I'm super happy to be here and I'm excited for this opportunity um, to chat with all of you in this community tonight. Um, now, I have not officially launched my coaching business. I do some coaching, but I haven't officially launched my business as of yet. Um, but I felt like doing this tonight was a really great opportunity, not only for my growth, but to help you guys as well. Um, I haven't really worked in the dental industry, but <laughs> being the wife of a dentist who owns and operates two different dental clinics, I feel like I get to hear all the ins and outs and all the frustrations and all of that fun stuff. So I feel like I have a really unique perspective that I can share with you guys. Um, so to begin, I just want to kind of share a little bit about myself and how I got to this point in my life. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, which is most of you. <laughs> My name is TJ Annika. I just live uh, north of Spruce Grove and I have six children ranging from ages 23 all the way down to six. And I actually have a grandbaby on the way, which is crazy. Um, I also do photography like Teresa had mentioned. I've been doing that for, I believe, I want to say 16 years. Let's just go with that. It might be a little bit more. Um, I Some of the things that I like to do when I'm not momming and everything else, I like to work out. Um, I like to read a lot of personal development books, which is kind of how I got into this as well. Um, I love karaoke nights <laughs> and I love to go dancing. So just some fun things about myself. Um, so I'm going to back it up kind of like from the beginning, just a 
my whole kind of journey um, because I feel like I need to share that to kind of let you know how I got to this to this point. So I was born and raised in Southern Alberta, um, a little Mormon town um, at, called Cardston. I don't know if you know where that is, but um, it was a great, great place to grow up. After I graduated high school, I actually went to post-secondary in Utah and I graduated there as a medical assistant. So basically in Canada, that translates into a receptionist. So I ended up working for six doctors in a clinic um, in Lethbridge. And that's basically where I met my husband. We had a short engagement. <laughs> we like met and five months later, we were married. We actually ended up eloping. Um, that's a story for maybe at the end, if we have time. <laughs> And shortly after that, we moved to Edmonton, mostly because we knew Steve wanted to be hopefully at the U of A and our families were fighting and basically to save our marriage, we decided to move. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. <laughs> um, our first year in Edmonton, um, Steve ended up working and I had to work as well. And I actually did work in a dental clinic for about three months until I found out I was pregnant and they let me go because I was taking over a mat leave. It was not a fun office. I'll just, I won't tell you which one it was, but it was not, fun. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Maybe there's, a, the training. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of them out there. So oh, yep. my, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I did experience one. Um, and I'm sure if I mentioned it, you'd all go, Oh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. And so in that first year, um, I ended up getting pregnant and we had our first baby basically two weeks before he went back to school into his second year of undergrad. Um, and you know, a few years go by, we were fortunate enough to be able to stay in Edmonton. He did get accepted to the U of A. So we ended up staying. And within those years, we had five of our six babies. So it was a very busy time. <laughs> and in fact, Steve was kind of the, I don't know if it was like a joke, but everybody would tease him for being the, they would know him as, oh, he was the guy that had all the kids while he was in school. It was that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, after graduation, Steve decided, well, we both decided that he would open a practice in Spruce Grove. And so he opened his practice and I ran with my photography business and kind of away we went. And that's basically how Teresa and I connected. We shot wedding together and we had a ton of fun. And I'm happy that I, you know, like you said, we circled back and we get to reconnect and this is really awesome. So we're going to back things up seven years ago. So at that seven years ago, my husband was turning 40. And so I wanted to surprise him with a fun trip, something that he'd really love. Well, we love Buffalo wings. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to surprise him. We're going to fly out to Niagara Falls. We're going to drive down to Buffalo, New York, because that's where they have the best Buffalo wings. So I whisk him away on this <laughs> romantic weekend. Uh, we had a great time. A month later, I found out I was pregnant with baby number six. This is 10 years after my other baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a big surprise. It kind of threw us for a loop. We're like, oh my gosh, what is happening? But he is kind of the missing little piece at the end that we needed. So it was a blessing. But during that time, um, while I was pregnant, my husband, um, he was actually in leadership in our church. And so, you know, he spent a lot of time at meetings. He spent a lot of time um, after work. Just we didn't see a ton of him. But the times that I did see him, he was always studying. And I thought, wow, like he's really taking this seriously. And so one night we're lying in bed and 
as we normally do, we connect at night. We talk, we chat about the day, we talk about the kids, like what's coming up. And so it wasn't, no, it wasn't, you know, a surprise when he said, I need to talk to you about something. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, go ahead. And he's like, I no longer believe in the church. And I was, I was like, what? And so that changed everything for me. Oof. Okay. Um, so many thoughts went through my head that day. You know, what was going to happen to, uh, to us? This religion was our life. This is who we were. Um, you know, I thought, how could we be a part member family? How could I go and him not go? What would that do to our children? I'm going to have to divorce this man. Like, what? I can't even believe this is happening to me. Um, what are our kids going to say? How are they going to react? What's the fallout? Like so many things went through, through my head. And so, um, so I asked him, I said, okay, I don't want to know anything that you've, I, I want to know nothing. Like, don't tell me anything. This is something I need time. I need, I need you to respect that. And he did. He was very, very respectful and very supportive. And after about a month, um, basically of me just trying to make sense of this and doing my own research and reading and praying and all the things that I do, um, I kind of came to the conclusion that, you know what, there are things that I don't agree with either. I dove into some of our beliefs that I just didn't, I couldn't wrap my head around, which was really hard because, you know, I trusted that this was, this, I was doing the right thing. And so I kind of had to put that same trust in myself that I was making the best decision I could for not only me, but for our family. And so we, we told our kids and they reacted like normal kids would when you tell them that they don't have to go to church every Sunday. <laughs> and they were, they were pretty, you know, okay, that's awesome. You know, thinking like, this is great. And at first, you know, having a second, what we call now our second Saturday, that was really fun. You know, like we got to spend a lot of time together and my husband, because he was in leadership was gone a lot. So it was nice to have him home. Um, it was nice to not have to wrestle with the kids or fight with the kids to get them ready every Sunday morning by myself and get them out the door. So there were some bonuses to it, but I, I eventually, I just, I got to the point where I realized I have no, I have no more community. I lost friends. Um, I, I don't want to say I lost family, but the relationships became different. They were forced. Like it was awkward. There's definitely like a separation that happens. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, because it's awkward and people just distance themselves in that situation. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. So the, I think the beautiful part was I, I got like I understood that. And so I was trying not to feel as hurt. And I, I feel like I wasn't quite um, as hurt because I came from a place of understanding their why, why they were distancing themselves. And so, you know, I, ha I had to give grace on both sides, but it was lonely. It was so lonely. Um, you know, and then the, like when you go through something like that, you know, I, I didn't know, no, I no longer had the same goals. I no longer had the same, well, what I felt like the same purpose. And I feel like my values weren't the same anymore. And so all these things that had driven me, like that was my life was gone. It was, and it was my choice, but it was gone. And I quickly realized like something has to change. I can't sit in this space. I can't sit in this darkness. It's heavy and I don't like it. I also have kids that are looking to me for some type of guidance, right? So I remember someone sharing um, 
a book that they had read and they'd said, you know, shared quotes and how it had changed their thoughts or whatever. And, and the book was called Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. Um, I'm sure most of us um, have heard of that. And so I decided, you know, like, what do I have to lose by reading this book? And I didn't even know what self-development was. I had no idea. Like, I didn't even know there was a self-help section in the bookstore. And so I bought the book and I read it. And then I bought the audio book and I played it in my car. And then I was like, oh, she has a podcast. And I started to listen to that. And then things just started to um, snowball. So I started following other life coaches and I started to read more books and I just couldn't get enough. And it was soaking it all in. And really, I just started to dive into personal development. Um, and my world just started to open up. Things started to make more sense. And, you know, listening to all these amazing humans and how basically they were allowing me to reinvent myself. So I was like, why not? I have nothing to lose at this point. I felt like I lost everything else. So I started, you know, just making these little promises to myself that I was going to work on my physical health, my mental health, um, my gut health, because we know that the gut is the second brain. So all these things I started to work on and just, I didn't do it all at once because that's overwhelming as heck. Um, but as I started to make these little small changes, um, I basically, I started to change and I started to evolve and it started, it inspired me. And I thought, I want to do this for other women um, and help them realize like, you can change at any moment. You can reinvent yourself at any moment. And so I had think, I'd been thinking about life coaching for a while, but I had those those negative thoughts and those limited, limiting beliefs. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, who am I? I'm just this plain old TJ, you know, who am I? And so that kind of sat with me for a while. And then March, 2020, <laughs> you know, COVID hits and we have, you know, we're stuck in our homes and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I chose the, you know, the life and health coach school, online school that I was going to certify through. And so I decided to do it. And I did. I, I got my life and health coaching certification over COVID, um, which actually helped immensely. <laughs> I can only um, imagine during COVID, like honestly, you'd be able to like directly apply everything you learned. Yeah. Everything. It, it saved me. Um, and during, and so I finished that. And then as well, during COVID, something else had happened that really changed a lot of my uh, trajectory. My brother gets sick. So another emotional thing. Um, him and I are very close. He lives, he lives close to me. He gets diagnosed with um, stage four lymph, T cell lymphoma. And that was hard. That was a hard, hard time for all of us. Um, so during his treatments, him and I would, we would chat um, almost every day via Zoom. And I could tell at certain points that he was, he's a, an amazing, like the strongest person I know. But I could tell there were times when he needed, he needed something to distract him because he was, I mean, he was bored sitting in the hospital and he was alone, right? Because they couldn't have visitors. So I said to him, I'm like, why don't the two of us, let's get our personal training certification. We both love working out. You know, we both love helping people. Let's get this. So when you're done, we could do this. This is something we could do together. And he was like, okay, let's do it. And so we did, we did, we both, we are, we both got certified, um, for nutrition coaching and for personal training. But watching him, basically watching him fight through the hardest thing that he could possibly imagine. 
um, it inspired me to, no matter what, just be the strongest person that I can mentally, physically, emotionally, because we just don't know. We don't know what's coming. We can't predict that. That's something that we can't predict. But we can be ready to show up in those moments when we have to. And that, he was a huge push for me to start going, you know what, I, I'm going to do this coaching business. I'm going to do these things because I want to help other people get ready for those moments. It's so important to be ready. There were times we lost, we almost lost him twice. And the doctor said, they said, he, no one, we've never seen anybody fight like this. And he would be gone had he not had prepared himself really unknowingly. He had been, he had been bodybuilding for 10 years and really he was the strongest he had ever been going in to his fight. Like amazing. Talk about inspiration. I seen you posted his before and afters just recently. Yes. It was insane. It was like the, the before was must've been like, was it mid treatment? Like right in the dead middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. It was after his first transplant. Yeah. It and was crazy, like just no muscle, completely no. deteriorated. Like, yeah. and I'd seen pictures of him before, just like because I've, we've always stayed connected through Facebook yeah. and whatever. And I was yeah. like, I can't even believe that's the same person. And then his after picture now, he's like, yeah, he so good. But like, it's just you put them side by side, and there's no comparison on like, no. No. He, it's just like a shell of a person. Yeah. Compared to it, like a normal it, person. It takes everything out of you. It literally takes everything. It was crazy to watch like within months him go from like this massive, like bodybuilding guy to like smaller than me. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it was, it was crazy. And now he's, you know, he's working on working out every day. Like he's the good news is he's cancer free right now. And he is working his tail off. And he just sent me an update today. He was like, sis, look at me. And he showed me like his, uh, he took a picture of himself the end of April. And then today, and the transformation is incredible. I'm like, this is nuts. You need to be training people to do this. So anyway, the the whole moral of that was, (laughs) it was very, very motivating for me to really push myself out of my comfort zone, which brings me to today, you know, so I sit here as a health and life coach, you know, Um, as well as a personal trainer and a nutrition coach. And, you know, my new business that I'll be launching, hopefully in the new year, will be a transformation coach for women. I just, I want to coach women on, you know, preparing for those moments that you're going to have to show up for, right? Um, I also run, and I just started this, I I run, it's called a bad, it's called bad moms and it's actually business and development. Everyone thinks that it's just a group of us that get drunk during the day, but we don't <laughs> we might have a few drinks, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, we're, we're starting to focus more on like the business side of things, or if you want to do some personal development. So I do do some coaching in that. Um, I also have other people that come in and chat. So if anyone's interested in that type of thing, it's free. You can come join. You can find us on Facebook right now. Um, But it's a community um, that's open to all women where we can connect and network. And you just have a place where you feel like you can belong because that's what I was missing. So enough about that. (laughs) On to the fun stuff. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, my husband is a dentist. And so of course, in preparation for tonight, I asked him, what do you think I should talk to the women about? And he just looked at me and he goes, I don't know. <laughs> he was Sounds really like a dentist mom. thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's like, I don't know. Tell him like not to be late. And this, I'm like, oh, you're so boring. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, so we do, like I said, like we chat every single day, um, when he gets home and I ask him, you know, how was work? Tell me about, tell me something good that happened or this or that. And in those chats, you know, I, I hear, I hear the frustrations and there was a lot, there is a lot. Um, he's not a very (laughs) empathetic person. And so working with a lot of women where I feel like you need to have a little bit of empathy, Yeah. 
So he, he struggles with that, but he's very good. He's a very good, um, communicator. He makes up for it in, yeah. Communication and patience. Yes. He makes up yes. for it. He might not have empathy, but he shows up in patience and communication. He so. totally does. Yeah. He is, he is a great boss. Um, anyway, the stuff that he comes home with, when he comes home and he, and he tells me about, Oh, so-and-so at work, you should see her. Like she's on fire this week. She's been doing this. And I always ask him like, what's going on in their life. And he'll say, Oh, well, um, I know she goes to the gym and I know she's been, yeah, she's been bringing all these healthy meals and putting them in the fridge and she's, you know, preparing for a marathon or whatever it is. Typically the ones that are showing up at work that are, you know, more productive and happy and making it a better space for everybody are the ones that have been working on themselves and doing their own personal development. So that's kind of what I wanted to focus on tonight is, you know, we're all women and we're busy and we don't take the time for ourselves. We also allow those negative thoughts to pop in our heads. Like I'm a failure at this. I didn't do this perfect. Oh my gosh, I suck at this or this, or look at so-and-so she's so cute. Look at me. I'm fat. Whatever it is, whatever those thoughts are that go through your head tonight, I want to give you a tool that will help you reframe some of those thoughts. Um, this is not a one and done. It's not a, we're going to do it tonight and you're going to be totally positive all the time. That's not even reality. No one's positive all the time, but when you have those dark, heavy days, when you are feeling that, uh, you know, you just, you feel like you're in a funk, this might be something that you can try and do. And, you know, hopefully it helps you reframe some of the thoughts and beliefs that are going through your head. So, um, so before we start, um, I just want everybody to make sure you have your handout. And if you don't, that's okay. As long as you have a piece of paper, um, either a blue pen, red, uh, black pen, and for sure a red pen or some type of like colored pen that you can use. Um, I think those are the things that I told everybody to have. Just in yep. case. Maybe, maybe grab a tissue if you need it. We're going to get uncomfortable tonight is what I'm saying. We're going to get a little bit uncomfortable. And um, as you can see, I'm an emotional person. So it might just be for me, but <laughs> I, you might want it too. <laughs> um, and just know like this is a safe space. We're going to get uncomfortable. We're going to share a little bit. Um, you don't have to share if you're not comfortable sharing. That's okay. During oh. this por during this portion, I am going to stop recording. So we went through that like a little bit okay. portion. So then people will feel more comfortable to share, and mm -hmm. then we'll edit it the other part at the end. So let me just pause. Okay, and just let me know whenever you want me to share the picture in case some people okay. didn't download it. Okay. Um, also, I <laughs> my throat is getting really sore, so I'm going to suck on this. Sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to cough the whole time. <clears throat> okay. So before I start, um, all of my coaching sessions with my clients, I like to start with like a breathing exercise just to kind of get us relaxed from our relaxed state. So if everyone can just kind of get comfortable in your chair, shake your, you know, shake your arms, um, and cross your legs, and I call this, it's a five, five, seven breath. And you can use this anywhere, anytime. I actually do this while I'm driving because I get like road rage driving in Edmonton. And so sometimes I'll sit at a light and I have to breathe. I'm like, I am going to rage out on somebody if I don't. So you breathe in for five seconds, you hold it for five seconds, and then you breathe out through your mouth for seven. So in through your nose for five hold for five and then out through your mouth for seven. So I'll count, um, I'll count for you guys for the first couple. And then I want you guys to do a couple just on your own. So if, you know, if you guys want, is everybody muted? Well, Teresa, yeah. you don't have to, but if you want to breathe into your mic, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I will mute. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so everybody take a deep breath for five. One, two, three, four, five. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Out for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And just see how your shoulders start to drop and you start to feel a little bit more relaxed. Let's do it one more time. So breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Out for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'll just do them on your own for a couple. And just do one more. Okay, perfect. Now, um, if everybody can grab their handout and for those that don't have it, so I'll have Teresa pull the handout up. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I'm gonna get everybody just to close their eyes. And I just want you guys, um, we're gonna do a little bit of a, a visual, visualization and I want everybody to just stand in front of a mirror. You're in a room, so close your eyes. You're gonna be standing in a room by yourself um, in front of a full length mirror. And I want you guys to start at your head and kind of gaze at yourself from your head all the way down. And I want you to be aware of the thoughts that pop into your head. So for me, a lot of times um, that moment is before I get in the shower or I start the shower and I'm waiting for the shower to warm up and I stare at myself in the mirror, you know, we're looking in there and we're popping any zits that we have or pulling the bags you know, trying to make our eyes look like they're not so droopy or tired. <coughs> I want you to be aware of all the thoughts, <coughs> the thoughts that you think while you're looking at yourself and just take a minute. Let's take a minute and allow those thoughts to come in. And just again, scan from head, head down. Okay, so I want you guys to open your eyes. Now on the paper, I want you guys to start writing all of those negative thoughts that popped into your head. Now I did this with, um, with another group of ladies this summer and you know, there was a lot of like, I, I don't like my cheeks or my cheeks are too fat or I wish my thighs were smaller or I don't like my stomach or my stretch marks. Um, those were some of the things that were shared. So yeah, we'll just take a couple minutes and just, I just want you to write out what, what was in your head while you were, while you were looking at yourself in the mirror. Is this all negative? Yeah, just the negative okay. stuff for now. I mean, if you had some positive, that's good. <laughs> I have nice hair. <laughs> I like that.
Okay, when everybody's finished, just let me know. You're good, everyone. The three people I can see are good. Okay, so I'm gonna assume everyone else is done. Okay, so just kind of put that, just put that paper aside. I'm just gonna chat to you guys about, um, kind of about a few things and then we'll circle back to that in a minute. So what is a belief? Um, a belief is something that you know with total and absolute certainty. It's a thought that you've decided either consciously or unconsciously is the truth. Our beliefs are the root of our reality and our results. A belief is an acceptance that a statement is true. Let me read that again. So a belief is an acceptance that a statement is true. Okay, so let that percolate. Um, where do these beliefs come from? So our beliefs come from our past programming. We are not born with any programming. Um, but over time, as we grow, we start to absorb these ideas from our environment, from our family, um, our friends, school, church, society. Most of the time, these beliefs are handed down to us. And those beliefs are most likely ideas that we didn't question or examine. We just adopted them from other people that we trust that had, we assumed had already done that for us. A lot of times these ideas do not truly align with the person that we truly are. So beliefs are not facts or truth most of the time. So who, have you guys heard of confirmation bias? Maybe, yeah. Um, so confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, favor, and recall information in a way that confirms or supports our prior beliefs or values. Once we have our belief, our brains tend to reinforce that. So our brains look to find evidence to support whatever our belief is, regardless if it's true or not. I found that fascinating. Um, so can we change our beliefs? Beliefs, all beliefs are a choice, which means yes, we can change them. When you change a belief, you change everything. So because our beliefs are learned, we have the power to unlearn them. Um, they're li any limiting belief that we have can be replaced with a belief that actually serves us. So the best news, beliefs are not cemented into our brains. Um, they're simply thoughts and thoughts can be rewired. Um, has anybody read The High Five Habit by Mel Robbins? Okay, if you haven't, I highly recommend this book. Um, she's amazing. She's one of the people too that I, I obsessed over. <laughs> she has like a very blunt, I've watched a lot of her like mm -hmm. she does like a lot of social media talks and yeah. just, like a lot of speaking engagement. So I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and she has like a very blunt perspective on things that sometimes shocks you into a realization, <laughs> right? Like yeah. she'll say something just very frankly and she's like, no, like it's this way. And then you go, oh yeah. Like you just sit right. there and go, yeah, okay. You know that that's right. I don't know why I didn't question that before. Or I didn't, why I didn't think that way before. And yeah. she is very much a huge proponent of, of women and in like a corporate entity, like pushing yeah. for excellence and, and making sure that um, they're also finding balance and equality, not necessarily equality, what we think is equality, what social extremes are, but like equality yeah. and like perspective. So yeah um oh someone's asking what was the name oh um mel robbins is the lady and her book is called the high five habit so yeah look into that it's really good um so one thing she talks about in her book 
in that one is that we all have automatic thoughts, which as we know are beliefs, but beliefs are not always true. So we, we think about these things so often that it, it starts to become our default. In her book, she states, if you deliberately change your actions or thoughts, you change your default way of thinking and acting. So this deliberate change is called neuroplastic response. So right now, your default thinking is making you hyper-focus on what's wrong, which I, when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Like we, we start to obsess over like the littlest things. We don't need to. Um, okay, where am I at? Okay. So one of the other things that she talks about is, um, is basic, it's a filter in our brains and it's called the RAS. So it's RAS stands for reticular activating system. So that is there. It filters out about 99% of the information that's being thrown at us every single day. So you are going to train your filter to block out things that don't serve you and help you notice all of the thoughts that do serve you. And you can teach your mind to find things that you want to see or think. So um, I'm going to get you guys to grab grab your sheet or look at your sheets again. So pull those out. All right. Um, now I want you, I want you just to look at, look at those negative things that are on your paper. Now I want you to um, imagine like, not even imagine, I just want you to choose somebody that you are going to have a conversation with. You're going to imagine them sitting right in front of you. It's going to be someone that you have this unconditional love for um, either, you know, it could be your mom, your, your daughter, your sister, your best friend, whoever you choose. I want you to imagine them sitting right in front of you. Okay. Now I want you to imagine saying those things. So in your mind, I want you to say that to that person, all the things that you just said all the negative things that you said about yourself. I want you to say it to that person. And then I want you to notice like what that brings up for you. Like, how does that make you feel to say that those things to somebody that you love? So just take a minute and, and do that. Okay. <clears throat> so saying those, like, how, how did that make you feel saying that to somebody that you absolutely love? Did it feel good? Sure. Didn't feel good to me. <laughs> no. Or right? for me, or I feel I, like it's, it made me feel like I'm a terrible person because, right. because no one should say that about someone else. Right. No, right. You would never say those things to somebody that you love. Yeah. It brings up a lot of sadness is what um, yeah. Lindsay said too. Yeah. 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 Like sadness and misery and hurt. Um, and what does it make you want? What does it make you want to do right now? Like, does it make you want to grab them and be like, I am sorry. I am sorry that I said those things. I would, I love you. I care about you. You know, how would you react to that? Like, how would you, if you said those things to that person, what would you do after, right? You'd be like, I can't believe I said that. I am so sorry. Like you are a beautiful person. You're not fat. You're not ugly. You're not, you know, whatever you have on your paper. So now I want you to imagine looking into a mirror and I want you to, I want you to say, I'm sorry. I want you to apologize to yourself because Ultimately, that's what we need. We need to apologize to ourselves for saying those things. We would never say that to someone we love, and we love ourselves. 
right? It also, for me, like when I did this, it brought up, like I wanted to grab them and like give them the biggest hug and be like, you are not these things. You are more than this. You are, you know, and all those things. And so when you imagine doing that to yourself, it sure changes things, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So now I want you guys to grab your red pens. Okay. So you're basically going to take your red pen and across every single negative thing, I want you to cross it off. And over top of it, I want you to write bullshit because that's what it is. If you don't want to swear, you can write something else, but <laughs> write bull crap. But yeah, go ahead and cross those off and write bullshit. Well, fake news or lies, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> but how can you, I'm sorry, my family's playing mini sticks in the basement. How can you, like, how can you do that though? Like, I do have ugly hands. Ugly hands? Yeah. No, you. That's no. But that's that's your belief. No, they are ugly. I know that's your thought and, process because I've seen you, your hands and I've never not once thought that. Never, exactly, not once. Has anyone ever said, Michelle, you have the ugliest hands I've ever seen? And if they've said that to you, can you please re like <laughs> remove no, them? Nobody's <laughs> ever said that to me. But I don't like them. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a belief that's system. Your, that's, this is what I'm saying. Like, these are your negative beliefs. Like, we're going, this is going to help change those. Okay. Okay. So here's another one. I have bruises. I bruise really easy and my legs are bruised. Are bruised. Okay. Bruises uh -huh. aren't nice. They're not. I'm like, bruises are ugly. Like, they're, my, my legs are you... bad because they're bruised. Okay, but you're hyper focusing on the like little things that don't matter. Do these matter? At the end of the day, Michelle, do these matter? Is it gonna change who you are as a person? Are your hands, because you perceive them as ugly, is that gonna change <laughs> you who Michelle is as a person? No. No, but would I be happier if my hands were nicer? That's not the purpose here. No. The purpose here is to an, analyze the fact that it doesn't just matter. because you thought it doesn't make it true yeah. to everyone around you. You're I think we need that. to remind ourselves that our body is not who we are. Yeah, exactly I'm very self critical. Um, but throughout this conversation, it just hit me that my body is not who I am. Exactly. Yes. It doesn't capture my essence. No. No. No, this is just a shell. This is just a shell. This is what just covers all the stuff. It doesn't matter. It's your soul or your whatever you want, spirit, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, your inner, yeah. your brain, your consciousness, yeah. your personality. It's whatever you want to call it inside of you that mm -hmm. is important. It's how not it's transported ac across the world is not important. It, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> She's still skeptical. I see. Yeah. Michelle's skeptical. always skeptical. <laughs> I, 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 Michelle takes a long time to digest things. Yeah. That's okay. I don't know. I don't know if I can ever not think about this. And I know it's a choice, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I can ever not like okay I scratched them out but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to still think about it well that's the next stage yeah it's not all at once like TJ didn't right. start doing nutritional you know what, TJ, whatever. maybe yeah. you should be ugly and talk about this. <laughs> okay 
Because <laughs> I haven't okay. washed my hair in like a week, and you look like you walked out of a salon. <laughs> oh no! Oh, honey, these are clipped in. Oh. <laughs> I don't Perfect. have beautiful locks. Are you kidding me? I had six kids. My hair is coming out in hand and handfuls. <laughs> but it's true, though. Like it doesn't. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't come quickly. These things no. don't come quickly, and. Um, if I can just share something really quick, TJ, yeah, you know, like after I had my last child, which was at the same time you had your 10 age, yeah. me and TJ have very similar life stories. I mean, she yes. had way more kids than me, but we had that last child at the same time within a couple of months, yeah. within a month of each other, I think Oh yeah, and yeah both, both had a 10 year age gap between the last two. And it was, I mean, I think TJ handled it way better than I did. I was I was a hot mess and it was very, very trying time for me mentally um, Mm -hmm. because I was just starting to get my career off the ground. I was just feeling like I was in this really good space and um, I felt like this baby was going to hold me back and it was hard to like reset and be like mom of a baby again which we all I don't know most some of us have had children on this thing some of us haven't yet so Mm -hmm. mom of a baby babies don't care that you had a career Mm -hmm. babies don't care that that you know that you haven't slept babies don't babies literally give two flying f's about anything <laughs> they, yeah. they demand they eat and they poop and they do it whenever they feel like it and yeah. so it was really difficult to me to for me to go back to that stage and restart and I felt like I gave up more than I wanted to and that was a very difficult stage and so then I became very critical of myself which was hard and yeah. it, And I can honestly say that as hard as it is to write lies over this and change your thoughts um, to make them better or to change your process to make things better, it is, it takes the same amount of time to go the opposite direction, but it's much easier. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to lay into the, well, I have well, one of my things on here is three kids came out of me <laughs> because you know, I look in the yeah. mirror and I think definitely you can tell I've had three kids like this, yeah. this body doesn't lie. It right. is speaking a whole truth in this situation. And, yeah. um, and I just feel like it's very easy to reiterate that in my head because that that is easy to reiterate because I already believe it. Like you said, your brain starts to just continue to kind of amplify already spoken terms and it becomes this, you know, megaphone of just information. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when I went after I had this kid and this was happening and I just kept down this path, it was very easy to reiterate exactly what I was doing all the time. Like the negative thought process that I was walking down, it took me the same amount of time to pull myself up, but it was much harder work. So like I went into postpartum depression after I had my baby, it was yeah. very difficult. It was a very scary time with, you know, lots of therapy, <laughs> lots yeah. and lots of therapy, you know, and cognitive behavioral therapy, which is rewiring your brain really. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's hard work. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, I like how in the beginning you said it's not one and done because I see these things and I know I knew what you were doing here and I wrote them down anyway because I'm being truthful I still have those thoughts Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm Michelle like honestly I'll never not have these thoughts but the point is I don't harbor on them and I try to continually think you know what I got three kids came on me I wrote also on here big hips um I I can't change that so I don't think about it and I just think you know what I got, I also have three kids that came out of me. I'm accepting of that now. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be the size four that I was before. Never. It's just not going to happen. I can't reverse childbirth. (laughs) It's not, it's not possible unless there's a surgery out there. I haven't heard of, but you can, so far as I know, yeah, I can't reverse that. Mm -hmm. I can't reverse, you know, some of the things that have happened to my body, but 
I can accept them. I might not find joy in them. I might not, but I can definitely accept, you know, that my boobs aren't where they were before. And I can accept that my legs aren't as athletic as they were. And that's super disappointing because I have great legs. I had great (laughs) legs and they're still okay. Don't get me wrong. They're not bad. I just, they were great (laughs) at one point. And I think, you know what? Okay. Well, that's something that I can work on and I can find, I can get back, back on track with and I will feel better about that down the road because I am doing things now I'm going for walks a lot more I'm bike riding I'm I'm trying to you know after six years get some semblance of my life back Mm -hmm. um and I think a lot less harshly about it but through therapy and through constant battling of like, yeah, you know what? I feel that one day and it might be garbage. And and then the next day I go, okay, you know what? That was really not a good day. And you were really mean to yourself and yeah. and pick myself up and, and try yeah. and push forward the next day being just a little kinder. Cause yeah, well give, cause, yeah, you need to give yourself grace. Cause you're going to have those days with every day, every, I even do it every single day. I will look in the mirror and there will be something that I'm like not happy about, but do, like you said, I don't harbor those anymore. Like I say them and I allow space for that. And then I let go. I'm like, that's something I can't change. I can't change the fact that I have stretch marks all over my ass. I can't change that. That is a fact. Nothing will fix it. Who cares? Does it change who I am? Absolutely not. I'm still an amazing person, regardless of what, damage was done having babies and growing like that's just part of life right so the therapy thing I absolutely agree if there are things that me as a as a life coach like I'm not a therapist I can give you tools but if it goes beyond that that's when I would recommend you know maybe you go to therapy and they can help you more with that type of thing that's like some deep-seated um kind of issues that again, I I can't legally. (laughs) (laughs) So um, anyway, we're going to move on because I feel like we're going to be over time here. Um, So once you've X'd out everything, you wrote your bullshit. um, I want on the back of the page for everybody to basically write. Now you're going to, you're going to turn it and you're going to write, um, I want you to imagine yourself as like your highest self. So the person that you've always wanted to be, you know, or someone even that you look up to, it might be, I love this about Teresa and I love this about Michelle and I'm going to bring it all together. And this is the person that I want to be, you know, I love how she's really compassionate and I love how she's a great listener. I want you to write, um, I am statements. So I am compassionate. I am kind. I am whatever it is. I want you to write those as your highest self. Do we get that? Did I explain that well enough? Yeah. Okay. Is it about ourself or like it's about the person that the person that you want Want to be be, like your highest self, not physically, not physically. So is this how you want people to see you or how you, like what you, you want can to portray? see yourself, how you want to see your highest self. Hmm. 
So as your highest self, are you wanting to be, you know, um, fearless or courageous or brave or, you know, confident? Mm-hmm. I have four. Okay. That's good. As long as we, at least everybody has one. So this is where um, maybe we could turn everybody's mics on for those that want to participate Um, and just kind of go one at a time and just share like one of your, one of your statements. Now after, um, okay. So say Michelle shares her statement, we're all going to say, yes, you are together. You're lying. Nope. No, you're not lying. You're not lying. No, no, no. I'm not lying, but you don't know. How we perceive you, Michelle, is definitely different than how you perceive yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll go first then. Okay, go ahead. Do you want one? Yeah, just share, just share one. One on the page. I am sure of things. Yes, you yes, are. You are. You are. Okay. <laughs> See, you're not believing this. The, you, you need to focus more on these, on this side of that side of the page yeah. versus the negative side. Okay. Okay. So I'll share. Um, I am, I am willing to change. Yes, you <laughs> yes, are. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right Teresa I love that you picked that one um <laughs> I am not always a fixer yes you are <laughs> I guess that's I am always uh, a that's tricky <laughs> that's <our> backwards <laughs> I mean yeah. like I am not I can't always always fix that. things pardon I can't always fix things. I can't always fix things Nope, that still works the same as a double negative. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, let me pick a different well, one. Okay, um, <laughs> but it gets uh, you thinking I, like to change, right? Like it gets you to think. So if they if you can't end it with yes, you can, then let's yeah. rephrase it, right? Okay, so then I am attentive. Yes, you yes, are. Yes, yeah, you are. Okay. Um, Lindsay, do you want to go? I am motivated. Yes, yes, you, you are. are. Okay. And then does anyone else want to share? Is it Angela? Angela. Uh, I, I am thoughtful. Yes, yes you, you are. are. And then we have one muted. So and that's okay. We don't all have to share. It's, it's all good. Um, okay. So that's kind of <laughs> our, our little tool um, that, you know, we can... Like I said, this is not a one and done. This is not going to fix things, but it kind of just gives you something to think about, right? Those negative thoughts that pop in your head. Um, I want you to imagine saying that to somebody that you love. It really, like for me, when I was writing them down and then I imagined saying them to my daughters, oh, <laughs> like that hurt me. And then thinking like that would hurt, that would ruin them. Why am I doing that to myself? Right? Like we are the person that we need to take care of. We are our number one priority. And I don't know if everyone's here as a mom, if you're not, it's fine, but we forget that like, we, we have to be able to show up for our families and our kids. And even like at work, you need to show up for people. And if you are not taking care of yourself, it's not going to work right? And anyway, so kind of to end, I just, I want you guys to know, like, you're all worthy. You're all beautiful humans. I don't know all of you, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't believe that there are bad people. I just, I believe that people are good. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, if any of you guys want to reach out, if you have any other questions, feel (laughs) free. I don't want to take up the rest of your night. (laughs) Um, I think, I think I need to talk to you. (laughs) 
<laughs> so Michelle, so funny. Oh, Michelle. <laughs> no, it was it was nice. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, yeah, I it was. Cool. Yeah, it was lovely to have you on. Honestly, oh, Angela says thank you so much. I think, wow. honest, there's just so much to unpack as a woman mm-hmm. in in a mm-hmm. career focused environment. There's so much to unpack as just a woman. Period. End of end of statement. And I think um, you have helped us a little bit here. Just kind of realize that that sometimes we get need to get out of our own head um, and realize that people around you really do see you differently. And and it's okay to accept that as a belief. Yeah. For you, as opposed to you just reaffirming your own belief structure, which might not be entirely accurate because it's a limited perspective of, of an environment. And I know that uh, you are just fabulous at what you do. And I felt like there was a really great connection here tonight. And, and I really appreciate you kind of laying it out for us and, and helping us um, get a bit more vulnerable because that's like a huge Brene Brown thing that I love, love, love. (laughs) I know I love her too. Yeah. And, and Brene Brown, anything is like, Mm-hmm. top notch if you need more books to read because it is oh yeah phenomenal oh, several of hers I love her. yeah and mm-hmm. so I think I think I just I'm really glad that you came on it was good for me it was I'm sure it was good for everyone else and and it will help us in our daily lives as and then yeah. uh, no doubtably like you said will bleed into our work day too because people who take care of themselves outside of work um, are able to take care of themselves at work and show up in different ways. And, and that's a really kind of wonderful thing mm-hmm. to provide your team as well. So thank you so much, TJ. Yeah. It was absolutely wonderful. And I really appreciate you and, and what you shared with us tonight. So yeah. from that, I will sign us off and we'll have a great night for everyone. And um, yeah. we'll catch you guys again soon. Thanks, TJ. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Bye. Yeah.